Hey again everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. Well, sorry about the erratic camera work last night, but again, I thought it was very helpful and very interesting. Um, appreciate all the good comments about how to approach the various um, different little setup challenges that come with the rotating stake plate. What I just finished doing is machining some, about half of, of the scallops, around the edge of the plate, maybe a little bit more than half. And it's been a very interesting process so far. It's stopped because probably what I'll do is, right now, since I've got this much of them done, I'll clean up, as you can see, clean up the rotating table, the uh, rotary table a little bit, and then very carefully, one at a time, reposition the hold down clamps. Um, let me show you. I, I, Last night I also I made a little list, a little list, of the, the 24 different angle settings for the scallops. And I've gone through, and I don't know if this will show up on the, on the camera or not, but uh, the ones with the check mark are done, the ones with the big zero next to them are not. So I can easily see which angle settings I need to complete the scalloping process and come back to it if I have to tomorrow, which I may end up doing, it's getting kind of late tonight. But, so I got a good bun bunch of them done. Um, all I did to do the scallops, this is a quarter inch end mill and a quarter inch collet inside the bridge port. I kept the, all the settings the same, I didn't undo anything just yet. And I played around with just with the visual aspect of it yesterday. I put the quarter inch, you'd notice the end mill sticking out a lot further than you probably normally would. You don't like stick out because it's, uh, it can, the end mill can actually bend a little bit, uh, spring out of position. But I went straight down just like I was thinking about doing. I set my depth micrometer on the sacrificial aluminum plate, I set my zero there. So I knew how far I needed to come down and I just, with the machine running, I just came straight down as in a drilling mo motion and uh, very carefully I didn't want to you know didn't rush it um, I let basically didn't feed any faster um, probably f a lot slower maybe about half speed like you normally would um, and it but it made great scallops here I'm really pleased with this I think just a little bit of file work and it'll be perfect now the depth that's another thing they don't talk about in the book but basically the depth of cut from the outside edge of the cutter is about a sixteenth of an inch. And the reason I know that is I, last night I set the cutter down, I played around with it on the x-axis, I put the cutter right next to the edge, and then I lit, raised it up, and I just fed it in a little bit, fed the table in a little bit, and I set the cutter down over the top of it. I said, that looks about right, and sure enough it was just about a sixteenth of an inch, about sixty-two thousandths. So I'm thinking that's a really good depth of cut. I think it's going to be fine. It will allow a nice uh, grip for the rotating stake plate, and it should be perfect. So that's all there is to it. And what I'm going to do now, clean up, and then I'll, I'll just very, very careful. I'll probably lower the table down so I have my hands have better access to what I'm doing. Turn on the, I turned off one of the lights so I wouldn't blind you with the, um, with the lights on the mill. I'll turn the lights back on lower the table down and then very carefully reposition the clamping arms so that they're they're clamping in the places where the scallops are already done and they're not uh not uh, there's no clamps where where I need to cut more scallops it should be very obvious um when I take the first one off I mean I'll probably just you know move and especially cuz there's um just there's six slots on the rotary table you know, basically probably just move each each clamping arm over one and clamp it back down again one at a time and I should be fine. So that's my plan for tonight. Thanks again for all the, uh, the great input. Uh, I really like the suggestion about using a boring head because that would give you a very controlled, really slow clip, 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 clip um, way to cut. So it's really cool. Again, thanks guys. I appreciate all the input. Um, you don't know how exciting that is to me to read, you know, like-minded suggestions. So keep it coming, and um, thank you, and I will keep you posted.
everybody about to mill the next to last scallop since the first segment that I filmed tonight I lowered the table I repositioned the clamps one over just exactly like I had mentioned and raised the table back up and there was only nine that I had to do. So that's the one at 315 degrees. We've got one more at 330, so I'm gonna unlock. 320. 330. Lock the table again. I love the locking feature on the rotary table. Put a little cutting fluid on the cutter. I just thought it'd be useful to show how slowly I'm doing this. Real nice and easy, just gently feeding that thing in. The disc is only 281 thousandths thick. I'm just feeding it down. I've got a digital readout on my quill, which I'd set to zero. So I can tell 10,000, oh, there we go. It's all the way down into the sacrificial aluminum plate. Go ahead and turn that off. Turn the machine off. We turn the, uh, I have a rotary phase converter, which is a loud noise that you hear in the background. Let me turn the sound system down. So there you have it. That's all there is to it. I've completed all of the cuts. And I'm really, really happy about how this has come out. Before I unbolt it, I want to double check. Yes, I have a check mark next to each and every one of my degree spots. I'm going to clean it off a little bit. I'll go ahead and unbolt the piece and take it up. Hold it up in front of the camera so you can see what it looks like. First, let me lower the table down so I have a little more access. I haven't taken too many still shots of this part of the project. Usually I do if you're a relatively new subscriber. Usually I, I take still shots and put them on Instagram. There's an Instagram account called Metal Mill 52 same as the YouTube channel. So if you're on that um, social media, you could check that out for some project stills and stuff like that. All right, getting rid of the little chips. And I had a wrench here somewhere. I don't use compressed air in the shop. I have an air compressor. But I really don't like to the, the whole idea of blowing chips around. I try to be real careful with that as a safety hazard. And so I just brush them out of the way. And I have a shop vac out here that I vacuum up the, the pieces. So I'm just trying to double check, think through. All the holes are drilled everywhere I gotta go. The only thing that may need to, to happen and hmm now that I think about it you know what I could go ahead and mill that 332nd inch slot while this is together hmm but I'm not sure I want to so if it let's uh, it's always good to think before you take a, a setup apart always good to make sure you don't need to do anything else if I have to do anything else it would be milling that 332nd inch slot in here to make room for the tab of the, on the bolt but I'm not sure I want to do that and if I do I can always put the bolt back I can put it in a drill chuck and use that to well, actually I don't even need to do that because I can well yeah I, I would to recenter the piece anyway never mind so I'm not sure I want to do that so let's just go ahead and unbolt it and take a look at the finished product let's see what that looks like let me set my clamps over here Get rid of a little bit more of the swarf. All right. Last one. Ok, 
Okie dokie. So there is our completely machined plate, rotatable stake plate. And what I'll do tonight before I go in, I'll deburr that a little bit. And then I'll play around with it. And tomorrow night I can mill the notch or file it or whatever I want to do. I think milling would be the cleanest thing. You can see that the sacrificial aluminum plate certainly did its job there and my little Arden stands did their job too. I selected small ones so it, I was trying to keep them smaller than the uh, bolt circle. I don't didn't quite do that but you get the idea. So I'm really pleased how that <coughs> excuse me how that came out and again about a sixteenth of an inch on the on the edges that'll certainly that'll be plenty of grip for moving around more probably more than I need probably could have done half of that a 32nd of an inch but you know once you start might as well make them all exactly the same it looks good and the holes I don't know if you can see that but it looks looks really neat little spiral looking shape there's the bottom there's a, a little hollowed out portion for the bottom and what I was talking about well I might as well show it while I'm I'm curious to see what it would look like here's that bolt so let's see sticking down if there was no pin the bolt would go all the way through but obviously there's that pin in the way so the question is okay yeah with the bolt head essentially flush with the top will the pin slip under yeah, it will just be underneath the bottom of this plate, so I could do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll leave the pin in. I'll show you what I was talking about for centering this thing. Well, no, I'm going to deburr it first. I'll, I won't bore you with my setup because the video has gone seven minutes, seven and a half minutes already, but uh, I'll just talk through it real quick in case you're wondering what I'm babbling about. I'll, I'm going to take the milling cutter out because I don't need that anymore, not this size anyway. I'll put a drill chuck back in, or a uh, 5 16 inch, so anything that will hold the the, bot, the bolt, and I can just use that, put put the bolt head in, and that will center the workpiece underneath here. I'll zero out my DRO again, not that I really need to do that, but I may as well, and then I'll clamp it down again with the same clamps while I've got them handy. And then I can just mill a 332nd inch slot to clear that that little tab on the bolt. So I'll do that tomorrow night. Probably, it's, like I said, it's getting kind of late. But really, really happy with how this looks. And this is going to be cool. That's one of the cool things about the Universal Pillar Tool. The, even though all the stuff I've made, gosh, there's probably 50 other different things, little attachments and accessories I could make for this thing. So, and... Um, and I may, may, I've made a few, uh, I may keep making a few more, um, but we'll, we'll let you know. So thanks for watching and I'll keep you posted.